Italy's decision to keep the Ariete main battle tank in service through the C2 upgrade program highlights the dilemmas facing medium powers when it comes to armored warfare. On one side of the equation, Germany's Leopard 2A8 represents the gold standard in European heavy armor, a platform that multiple NATO members are rushing to procure after the war in Ukraine reminded everyone that tanks still matter in high-intensity conflict. On the other side, Italy has chosen not to buy Leopard 2A8s in the near term, but instead to extend the life of its existing Ariete fleet with a modernization program that covers around 125 vehicles. This raises a simple but consequential question. Can the Ariete C2 compete with Europe's most advanced Leopard? The Ariete was originally introduced in the early 1990s, at a time when the Cold War had just ended, and Italy wanted to field a domestically designed tank to replace the M60s it had inherited from the United States. With a 120mm smoothbore gun and a weight under 60 tons, it was a capable but not revolutionary design. In NATO service, it never had the prestige of the Leopard 2 or the Abrams, but it filled a niche as a national product and sustained Otto Malara and Iveco's role in the defense sector. After three decades, however, the Ariete was clearly outdated. Its armor protection was insufficient against modern kinetic energy rounds and top-attack anti-tank guided missiles, its fire control system lagged behind NATO standards, and its power plant was underpowered for contemporary battlefield demands. The C2 upgrade seeks to address some of these weaknesses. The most important changes include a new 1500 horsepower engine, bringing the area closer to the power to weight ratio of modern tanks. The suspension has been reinforced to handle the additional weight of modular armor packages, which improve protection against both kinetic and chemical energy threats. The fire control system is being replaced entirely with modern thermal sites and digital electronics, giving the Ariete the ability to engage effectively at night and under degraded visibility. These upgrades extend the service life of the tank into the mid-2030s and bring it closer to parity with older Leopard 2A5 or 2A6 standards, though still below the very latest models. In contrast, the Leopard 2A8 sits at the pinnacle of European armored design. Building on the proven Leopard 2A7V, it incorporates the Israeli Trophy Active Protection System, offering a hard-kill defense against incoming rockets and missiles. Its armor has been enhanced with the latest modular composites, providing resilience against a broad spectrum of threats. The Rheinmetall 120mm L55 smoothbore remains its primary gun, but it has the potential to transition to a 130mm cannon in future variants, giving it significant overmatch. The Leopard 2A8 is not just a tank, it is a production and logistics ecosystem, with hundreds of units being ordered by Germany, Norway, the Czech Republic, and other European nations. This ensures standardized sustainment, shared training, and economies of scale. When compared directly, the Ariate C2 remains at a disadvantage. The Leopard 2A8 is heavier, with weights exceeding 64 tons, compared to the Ariate's roughly 54 to 60 tons even after its upgrades. While both tanks now field 1,500 horsepower engines, the Ariate has a better power-to-weight ratio on paper. But in practice, the Leopard benefits from a more modern transmission and mobility system. The Arie uses the shorter L44 gun, whereas the Leopard's L55 offers higher muzzle velocity and greater penetration at long range. In terms of survivability, the gap is even larger. The Arie C2 has improved armor, but no active protection system. The Leopard 2A8 not only has the Trophy APS, but also comprehensive situational awareness sensors and or battle management systems. Italy's choice reflects more than just battlefield arithmetic. The C2 program is intended to sustain the Italian defense industrial base, specifically Leonardo and Odo Malara, ensuring that key competencies in armored vehicle design are not lost. 
It is also a matter of cost. Buying Leopard 2A8s would require a massive capital investment, with each unit costing well over 10 million euros and requiring a parallel investment in infrastructure and logistics. Upgrading existing Ariates is far cheaper and keeps Italian industry employed. Politically, there is also an element of sovereignty. By sticking with the Ariete, Rome avoids becoming dependent on German suppliers for its heavy armor. The consequences for NATO are mixed. In a scenario where Italian forces would need to deploy to Eastern Europe in a high-intensity conflict against a peer adversary, the Leopard 2A8 is vastly superior in protection, firepower, and integration into multinational formations. In peacekeeping, counterinsurgency, or Mediterranean stabilization missions, the Ari-8 C2 is sufficient, and its lower operational cost means Italy can keep more vehicles available. NATO as a whole benefits when its members field interoperable platforms, and here Italy is out of step. Most allies are converging on the Leopard family, creating a wide base of logistics and spare parts. The REA remains a unique outlier, which complicates coalition operations. Whether the REA AC2 is a bridge solution or a strategic dead end will depend on Italy's next steps. If the upgrade is used to buy time until a true next-generation platform, such as the KF-51 Panther or the Franco-German Main Ground Combat System, MGCS, becomes available, then it is a rational choice. It allows Italy to maintain a credible, if limited, heavy armor capability while preserving industrial know-how. If, however, the C2 is treated as the final answer, Italy risks falling further behind as Leopard 2A8s and eventually MGCS dominate the European armored landscape. The Ariete C2 is good enough for now, but it will not be good enough forever. Ultimately, the Ariete C2 and the Leopard 2A8 represent two different philosophies. The Leopard embodies maximum performance, survivability, and NATO alignment at high cost. The Ariete C2 embodies pragmatism, affordability, and industrial sovereignty, but at the expense of absolute capability. Italy has made its choice based on national priorities, but by the mid-2030s it will need to decide again, and that decision will determine whether it remains in the first tier of NATO's armored forces or slips permanently into a second tier role. For now, the Ariete C2 can hold the line, but the Leopard 2A8 remains the undisputed benchmark for Europe's armored future.